So I got a new Raspberry Pi and I've made a network area storage out of it. Uh, I made my NAS using Open Media Vault and I'm going to show you a little bit about the ins and outs of that. So my goal with this project was to create a, uh, a storage outside of my PCs that would house all my media. Um, I've got a bunch of Blu-rays that I've copied over to disk and I've got a bunch of CDs that I've copied over to disk and I wanted a central place to stream them to uh, to several different devices even if my computer was off. So this seems like the uh, the best way to do that using the littlest amount of power. Um, I can stream to my phone, I can stream to a tablet if I want to, and I have another little Raspberry Pi attached to my TV that has Kodi on it. And then I'm going to also set it as a centralized database for the uh, for the Kodi application, so it can stream to multiple devices, uh, laptop, desktop, phone, or the big TV. So all of that can be done with a little $35 Pi. I want to stress that I got the Raspberry Pi 4. I got the version with one gigabyte of RAM. So I got the cheapest current version available. For a file server, you do want the Pi 4 definitely because it has USB 3 ports. The ones before that were limited to USB 2, and that's probably not going to cut it if you're transferring a lot of data to an external hard drive. So hardware-wise, I got the Raspberry Pi 4, and I got a uh, Western Digital external hard drive, nothing too special. Um, there was a decent price on uh, an 8 gig version on Amazon, so I just got that, plugged it up plugged it in, and um, and then went over to Open Media Vault's website to see what to do from there. So I started here. Uh, it explains a little bit. Open Media Vault is just a free system to run to manage your storage. It's built for uh, NAS systems, and it's compatible with the Raspberry Pi, and it is very, very powerful for free software. So I'll show you how, how all that works. Just went here, went to download. Uh, installation images can be found here. And I'm looking for a single board computer. That's the Raspberry Pi. I went ahead and got version 5. It's technically still in beta, but it's been in beta for a long time. Most of the kinks are worked out as far as I can tell. I haven't had any trouble with it, but if you want something that's definitely stable, you can go to version 4. Um, Version 5 refers me to this website, which I have open right here. Um, and this is just a PDF on GitHub that explains how to get this thing installed. It is 18 pages, but it's nowhere near as scary as it looks. It's all written in plain English, and it's, it's very easy to walk through. It's built with the Windows user in mind. There, it explains how to do all of this within Microsoft Windows. If you're in Linux, you can make some fairly self-explanatory adjustments to get it to work for you. Uh, main thing we're doing here is downloading uh, Raspbian, which is the default uh, operating system on these Pis, and they recommend downloading the... Uh, the light version, so you're only dealing with the command line, which is great. Uh, they also show you how to modify uh, the extracted image on your uh, SD card, so it will support SSH out of the box, so you don't even have to attach that Pi to a display or a keyboard or anything. So that's what I did. Um, got that guy um, going burn the image on it, and then to SSH. Uh, in Windows, you use PuTTY, and they show you how to do that. In Linux, you just say SSH, and the default user is Pi, and the IP address for me is 192.168.1.102. And it asks you for your password, which I've actually reset this. The uh, Default password is in here. I forget what it is. I think it's just Raspberry, I think. 
Yeah, the default password is Raspberry. It says it right there. And once you're in, you can change that password using the password, P-A-S-S-W-D command. Uh, definitely change that. Definitely change that. Um, and then, yeah, it just walks you through everything you need to do. There's this, uh, you want to upgrade all your packages, and then there's this magical command right here. That just downloads Open Media Vault and installs it. And then you reboot and you're golden. So once that is installed and rebooted, you'll be able to go to your web browser. You'll enter the IP address that is attached to that Raspberry Pi, which you can find on your router. You can also use a tool like Nmap to find it. There is also a very handy uh, tool called NetScan that you can download for an Android phone, probably for an iPhone too. And as long as your phone's on the same network as your Pi, you can scan and it'll show you all the devices that are attached to that same network. And you can tell which one is your Raspberry Pi. So mine's located at this IP address. And you type that into your web browser and this is what you get. Just a simple login. The username is admin. The password by default is Open Media Vault. Again, once you're in, I recommend changing that. Your host name by default is going to be Raspberry Pi. You can change that in network. Change your host name. If you're on a domain, you want to put your domain name in. Uh, the first thing you want to do is come over to Interfaces. And you want to enable this guy. So you can double click. Uh, I recommend using a static IP. Uh, IP address and netmask is almost always going to be 255.255.255.0 and gateway is whatever your router address is. So, so you've set your address, you've enabled your ethernet port. Now what you can do is uh, come on down to disks and this will show what's attached. This MMC is the, um, is the SD card that's in the Raspberry Pi. That is running Open Media Vault, but we don't want to use that as external storage, so we leave that well enough alone. This other guy, uh, Dev SDA, is our uh, Western Digital external drive. See, it's eight terabytes. So you have the option to edit. Uh, you have a couple of uh, advanced options there. I wouldn't worry about changing any of that. Uh, you have the option to scan and the option to wipe. Not a bad idea to wipe it before you start. And then once that's there, you can come to File Systems. And it will be offline and disabled at the time that, uh, that you first set it up. So you want to select it. You want to create a file system. It will allow you to select your device, which I can't do here because all of mine have file systems. But... You, in this drop-down, we'll have lists of any device that doesn't have a, a file system on it. You choose the device that you want to access, and you choose the file system to put on it. ext 4 is probably the safest. I considered XFS, but I'm not knowledgeable enough to know for sure that that's what I wanted to do. And I knew that I wasn't going to mess anything up with ext 4 So I stuck with that. And that will run for a little while, a few minutes, and then you'll have a usable hard drive. And then, once it is usable, you want to mount it. So you have your hard drive installed, you have a file system on it, you have it mounted. Then you want to create some sh network shares on it. So these are the guys that I've created. In fact, I can go ahead and get rid of this one. That's just one that I was testing out. Uh, to create a network share, what you do is click Add and give it a name. Uh, I'm going to call this FBT. Tell it which device you want your share on. You can have multiple drives attached, but this is uh, our big drive. The name is what a user will see. The path is where it's located on the drive. So. They're close to the same. I would kind of recommend just leaving the path alone unless you have a reason to change it. Um, so here we have 
path. Uh, permissions, probably want to go ahead and change that to everybody can read and write, and then save it. So now we have a network share called FBT, and it will ask you, this configuration has been changed. Do you want to apply? Yes. Yes. Uh, this is something, anytime you change anything within Open Media Vault, you got to click that yellow apply button, and it can take a little while. Um, it's a slight limitation for running on such limited hardware, but there you go. It didn't take that long. So now we have this share, but it is not referenced. What I want to do is create a new SMB or NFS share. If you're going to be accessing this from a Windows machine, definitely use SMB. That is the default in Windows, and Windows is much happier looking for those. I'm sure there's a way to get to an NFS share from Windows, but it's not going to be straight, super straightforward. So, yeah. Yeah, you can see the icon there is the Microsoft Windows icon. So, definitely recommend that. Um, for my purposes, I won't be accessing these through Windows. And I've got some big files. NFS moves a little bit faster if you're using only Linux machines. So there we go. So you want to make sure that's enabled. And then you come over to shares and add. And it'll ask you what shared folder do you want to add. And what we have here is FBT is there. Then the client, it's asking you for the IP address of the machines that are going to be accessing this share. For me, I want 192.1. 68.1.0 slash 24, which says all addresses starting with 192.168.1, which is my internal network. I want to give everybody read write privileges, and then we can uh, leave that stuff alone, or we could change it to no subtree check. Something I read recommended turning subtree check off. For our purposes, I don't think it's going to make a big difference. So I save this, I apply my changes, I say yes, no wait for that. All right, that one took a little bit longer, but not too bad. And that's it. One thing I want to check real quick, if I go back up to shared folders, I want to take a look at the ACL on this and make sure others have read, write, execute access. That's perfect. That's, I am all good with that. Yeah, we should be good there. Now, if you created an SMB share, what you can do is come to your fire file browser and look at network, and it will likely show up under Windows network. Um, yeah, no such file and directory for me because I have no Windows shares. What I do have are these guys, which are my music and movie shares, and I need to add access to the FBT share. So to do that, I need to edit my uh, file system table, which I can do with sudo nano etsy fsab. All right, and it's important to make sure you know what machine you're on. I almost edited the, the file system table within the uh, Pi itself. That is not what I wanted to do. So I exit out of that session. I'm back on my PC. So now I can sudo nano at CF stab, and it's going to look more like I expected. So here we just follow these instructions. File system, we're going to put the IP address followed by a colon, followed by a forward slash, and the name of the share. For the mount point, we need to create a folder to mount this on. So I'm going to go into home. I'm going to, I created mine in NAS. That's, I have my movies and music there. I'm going to create a new folder and call him FBT. And I am going to point this share at that folder. Home slash mark slash nas slash fbt 
and it is an NFS share. And in the back here, we're going default to zero, zero, just because that's what we want to do. We will control X, we will save, we will uh, write to the file. And we will do a sudo mount minus A. And you see what happened there is my new share just popped up on me. So FBT exists now. Uh, you can see it's a network location right here. And once they're mounted, you don't have to worry about navigating to the folders where you put them. Network locations are going to show right here. So we can create a new folder. It's an FBT uh, test. We can go into that folder. We can create a document. Uh, test.txt. We can open that guy up. And this is my new document. I can save it. I can close it. I can open it with another editor just to make sure the changes took place. So I have read write access on multiple levels in this new network share. And I can get to that from any device with access to that Raspberry Pi. And that's pretty darn cool. So that is basically how you use Open Media Vault to create a new network share that uh, you can access from multiple computers using very cheap hardware and completely free software. So I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly have enjoyed playing with, uh, with this file server myself. It's been a good time and I have learned a lot. I hope, to share, hope I shared some of that knowledge with you and I hope you guys are doing good. Let me know uh, in the comments below and like and subscribe if you see fit. Thank you very much.